G'day there, folks. Andrew Griffiths here, international best-selling author, speaker, all things small business in reality. Now, not here to talk about me today. We're here to talk about Mr. Matthew Mason. G'day, Matthew. How are you doing? Hi, Andrew. I'm good. And yourself? Very, very well. Thank you. Now, Matthew is the founder of Maven Veal, a company that specializes in developing online assets, like online programs for entrepreneurs. And uh, I'll get Matthew to kind of define that a little bit in a second. Um, I've worked with you, mate, um, and your team to develop my Charge What You're Worth online program. And I found the process really, really interesting, actually, and very thorough, because I've, I've developed online programs in different ways, but I bumbled through it myself, work now with a professional team and, and had a very different experience. So I, I guess in reality, what it is, I've had a few really key realizations about online programs and along the way, mainly from our discussions, Matt, you know, like about, you know, when we're talking about different bits and pieces and, and just, you know, like it's not set and forget and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So I thought it would be great value to talk to Matthew today about the processes he used, the value of developing online programs, um, the reality of creating assets and resources, um, how you go about doing what it is that you do, all of those kind of things. Because I know that most of my audience are small business owners. They're looking to develop online programs. There's a lot of chatter out there. Or online programs, they just get chat PT to do it, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Um, I, I want to have a conversation and ask you a whole pile of questions and perhaps share some of my experience of working with you as well um, in, in this particular process. So um, so let's let's start there, mate. Tell me a bit about your background. Um, in in like, how did you get into this? Um, developing learning resources, I guess, is yeah. the the language because um because you've yeah. got a big background in it, right? Yeah. Look, yeah, it is. It's interesting. I started I started doing this back in um, November nineteen ninety eight. So we're going twenty. Wow, yeah, twenty five years. Getting up to twenty five years. Um, prior to that, I was actually working in the horse racing industry. So it's quite an interesting logical it's an interesting, progression, right? Logical, it is, it is, it is natural, well, natural progression. Were you a jockey? Um, no, I wasn't a jockey. No, I was one. Of, I was the I was the poor guy that used to work the horses in the morning and get them fit so the jockeys could then get the accolades when they won and and, and all the prize money on on race day. So, um, but I'd been spending a bit of time. <laughs> I'd spent prior to, prior to that. I'd been I'd spent about eighteen months prior to that working in Japan. Uh, and and breaking and educating horses, but also teaching teaching the the Japanese that were working with how we did that, um, and then discovered that there was a school here in Brisbane that was uh, teaching Japanese students how to work with horses and how to how to get a job in the racing industry. And so I, I came back from came back from Japan and was lucky enough to get a job a, a job there. And then uh, about six months into the into the job, they went. Oh, can you step into the classroom and start teaching? And and I did that, and and the resources they gave me were the, were very very light on, and I right. and I sort of said, oh well, you know, <laughs> is this all there is? And they went, yeah. Can you do something better? And I went, well, yeah, I think I can. And so that really started me on that process of of, of developing the content. Um, and so it was initially just um, you know content for for classroom settings. But then started to move into looking at well, how can we actually put some stuff on? And we did a project. We got some. Um, so it was a, a training organisation. We got some funding from the government to look at how we can actually use technology and how we can actually start putting some of this content and, and creating some web-based content. And that really that sort of moved me on that pathway. Uh, yeah. So a, and, yeah. And then so so did you. Um, because you used to do a lot of training and development, like development of online learning, e-learning for corporate, you know, corporations, right? Did, was that your own business or did you work for organisations? How did that kind of happen? Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 after a while, I sort of got to that, I suppose, probably like many people, got to the sort of that pathway where I went, okay, do I stay in the, in the racing industry or do I continue down in the, in the learning and development industry? So... Um, again, natural progression from racing. I, I got a job as a training and development manager for a, for a finance mortgage company. Uh, did that for a while, and then I moved, and then got to a point where uh, you know an opportunity presented itself for me to go and do some do some contracting with with some people I'd met, and that really then started me that started me on that pathway to actually running my own business, and then so yeah, stepped out and started developing a lot of content, working with large corporates, um, some some banks. 
you know, a number of other of other you know organisations we got a bit of work with, uh, some fast food retailers like Domino's, KFC, um, and started developing the online content for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and but more recently, we've sort of done that shift to working with yeah the the solopreneurs, the small businesses. Um, and, and actually where we, you know, it's very much what I talk about being my heart work, you know, mm-hmm. working with some people, you know, like yourself, Andrew, that is, it's helping people to, 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 you know, generate a, a better business to, to be getting paid what they're worth mm-hmm. um, and, and, and having those, those, in, that real impact on people's lives. Um, and so that's sort of that been that progression that we've gone through. And and uh, that must have been interesting. I mean, what are you? What's the biggest difference between working with in, in corporate space and working with like the entrepreneurial space? Oh, I think. Look, the biggest difference is probably the fact that we're really dealing with the decision makers and and can really work closely with those people. Um, and and really, I suppose that the, what they're actually doing is is really actually de- developing um, content that's going to have real change whereas mm-hmm. some of the other stuff we develop with with you know um, yeah with corporates it'd be onboarding training and things like that and sometimes you go oh is this actually going to deliver the outcome is it really going to solve the problem um, whereas mm-hmm. whereas we are working with the, the the entrepreneurs then we're going hey yeah this is actually this is really going to help people and, and solve problems for them Right. And so, so let's dive into that a, a, a little bit. Um, so, so you work with entrepreneurs like me, you know, people that have written books, people that have got perhaps, you know, a bit of thought, knowledge, uh, leadership kind of stuff in there, whatever it might be, but they've got something worth saying. Um, we, we've all probably heard the term product ecosystem. And, uh, mm. and we understand it, you know, realistically, these days in the, you know, in, in the, you know, learning and development kind of you know, stage and most of us as entrepreneurs in one shape or another, we need to develop products. Um, so, so what's your take on, on product ecosystems? Yeah, so it's really about just thinking about, I suppose, all of that knowledge that is locked in people's heads um, and, then, and then unpacking that and creating a whole range of different digital assets that, that people can consume. And obviously people are going to be, be working with you or, or you're going to have interactions with people and they're going to be at different levels of that customer journey. You know, it might be they're just going, okay, I've just discovered that, yes, I've got this problem um, and, and don't really know that there's a solution out there or they might go, I need this solution. Um, and, and really sort of working with giving people an opportunity to, to get to know, like, and trust you and work with you in different ways. Mm. You know, so creating a, creating a simple lead magnet or a scorecard or, mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, a, a mini course that really just to sort of highlights where people are at and, and what they can do, but then or, but also going forward and creating a, a bigger online program, um, potentially taking a book and turning that into a into an online course, or or taking, you know, and, and looking at going, okay, do I create a, a a hybrid program which is a combination of my online course and building a building a learning community and and doing coaching and all of those things combined so it, it is really about having this whole range of different resources and, and digital assets that you can engage with people in so many different ways i think for me these days it's all about building community and building you know building your network you know we all hear the term building your lists and funnels and all that kind of stuff which i to be honest get a little bit tired of hearing about in some respects but but it is the truth you you, you have to be building community and i think one of the greatest ways to build community is to have really really good assets that you utilize and you know from my experience uh, with the training that I've done and with a lot of people over the years, Matthew, is that people don't actually realise what assets they have. They don't really understand the IP that they have or even the kinds of products that they could actually develop and, and to what end. I think people go straight to, I'm going to do an online course and sell it for a million dollars and sell and retire in the Bahamas, you know, which of course never happens, is not the case. They miss the mark. And I really noticed this, I think one of our last couple of conversations when we were just talking about okay you can take a book and make it into an online program but that's actually a little bit one-dimensional almost to look at it that because probably the book has four or five like mine there, there could be three or four different kind of programs that come out of that there could be assets that you could pull out of that that you could use again to 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 build community free stuff that you could build and i found that a really interesting kind of conversation because i think again 
Um, one of the great things that I got out of working with you was that extra, that thinking around that, where your fresh eyes come along and go, well, you know, this would be great as this. Hey, that's a nice self-evaluation kind of piece. That's a scorecard mm. kind of piece. Or, hey, that's a nice, that's just a nice giveaway, or that's a nice um, kind of an element. And, and I think that um, that we don't really realise the assets that we have or what products we could create. And because we don't realise the potential of that, we we tend to miss the opportunity. It is I'm not really sure what the question is in there, but but what's your take on that? Yeah, look, it is, there is, and I think yeah, that, I think it is that that issue of having that one dimensional approach. I mean, we had a conversation with someone uh, a while ago and about turning their book into a course, but when I looked at their book, their book was broken up into seven sections, and there was three chapters in each section. And when we looked at it, I went, hang on a minute, this is not, a, I mean, it could have been one big program, but also each of those chapters, the way the book was written, they were very much standalone pieces. And we've gone, okay, we've actually got 21 smaller micro courses here that can solve a, a specific problem. And, and so then when you look at that, you go, okay, we've now got one big overarching problem uh, program. We've got these 21 micro courses. We could also package up and do those seven sections. So we've now got 20 so 29 different potential programs that we're selling. And then that's not taking into account anything else like you talked about. Like, yeah, is there a scorecard? Is there something that can measure, okay, mm. how am I progressing against these, these levels? Um, you know, those other little pieces to go, okay, well, you know, give people a bit of a taster on what that is. So there's so much that you can, can do with it. And even with your program as well, like we've talked about, yes, we've got your you know, we've turned your, your book into a, into a course. But there's elements of that where you can actually go, oh, my God, I could go so much deeper. Yeah, yeah you know? exactly. And, and, and that's the thing. And going, okay, well, that, let's, you know, we're skimming across here. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff in your thing around customer experience. Well, okay, we could delve deeper into that. And that mm -hmm. then becomes a, a, an even bigger course. So, yeah, there's a lot of those, a lot of those different things and thinking about that in a whole range and you actually then start to start to pull that out and, and effectively yeah your book could be sort of the center of your ecosystem but there's so many other things that you pull apart and 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 so true. allow for people to engage, engage with you in different ways well and, and it, again if i was going to say one of the, the key benefits that i i got from working with you on my program was that aha that that realization of um, my my thinking in many of us, and I'm a product architecture guy. You know what I mean. So 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 I looked at it and thought, wow, again, um, it, it's the missed opportunity of just going turn the book into a course, and, and they're probably missing fifty products or fifty different mm -hmm. things that that you could utilize. And these days, I, I think it's so time intensive and costly and all that stuff to create these high value assets like a book or a podcast show or something like that. That to not have multiple uses for them and to not create multiple kind of, um, you know, assets is almost, mm. a, you know, it, it kind of missing the missing the opportunity and keep going on to do the next and the next rather than saying, have I fully utilized this asset? Um, mm. That was that was that was a really big um, aha for me in that. And and I think, again, that's that's something that, that's a really big differentiation. I think we're, we're too quick to just go, oh, bang, turn that into an online course, move on, you know, mm -hmm. um, and and, and I, I, I'm got a new, a new appreciation of that as well. So very interesting. Okay, so let's so let's say I, I'd like to talk through the process. And, and I mean, obviously, I work with you um, on my course, as we've said, um, but I'd love you to kind of talk us through the steps. And perhaps I'll give my feedback along the way when we say, okay, we started here, we did this, we did that, rah, rah. Um, because I think there's, even though this was for mine, you might want to also add a bit, well, this is the step that we might do this, this, and this as well, and kind of yeah. come up with that. So, 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 so where do you start? So, so the first piece we start, obviously, is really having that bit of a strategy call and understanding what you're trying to achieve um you know because we've had conversations with with people um and someone's gone i want to create an online course and and that's all and and, and okay well why why are you doing this and they're going okay i'm, I'm looking at retiring I've, you know and this is i've got one person we fit this bill exactly right. and he's like I'm, i've got i've got a book i've got a whole heap of resources um and i want to i want to retire and i want to have a bit of a passive income and so what we that would 
pretty much just be a self-paced standalone online course. We had someone else and we spoke to them and they went, oh, okay, we'll actually want, and, and when we got into that strategy, she went, oh, actually, I want to build a community, but I want to then sell my courses to community. And the approach we would take with both of those would be different. And so it's really clear on understanding what's that, what's that end goal, what's that future, future perspective. We've got another, we've got another client who, again, has got their book. And he wants to really, and, and we're helping him develop a hybrid program because he understands the client that he's working with probably need a bit of handholding and they need to be, be accountable and, and, and just giving them an online course. They're not going to finish it. They're not going to, they're not going to progress through it. And, and also there's other things that he wants to work with them. And so he, again, he's building community, giving them a program, doing virtual coaching, having this real hybrid program. So three, three, three very similar people coming to us but their, their end goal is completely different so mm. that's the first part mm. it's great. really understanding that yeah great part and that that goes to what we're talking about here is <laughs> is you don't get that when you go oh, i'm gonna go into kijabi and just do my online program you know which is the thinking and the strategy and i think it's what's missing you know in so many uh entrepreneurial kind of development of assets you know, I'll make a course, I'll do this, I'll do that one off thing. It's very limited. And, and 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 that was, again, as I said before, one of the great things I got out of working with you was to think a little bit more broadly about the creating of assets as opposed to getting fixated in, I'm just going to create an online program, mm -hmm. which is what most people do, I might add, yeah. and they sell none of them, right? So, yeah. and, you know, because yeah. they haven't and, built and, the other and, stuff, and, right? No, no, that's right. Yeah. And, and it's interesting you mentioned Kajabi because in this, in using, using those three case studies, they're all using different platforms Yeah. because there's a whole range of different platforms and different platforms to deliver, deliver different outcomes in different ways. Um, and so that was the other, that's the other piece of it. It's not like, okay, well, that's the outcome you want to do, but Hey, we're just going to put you into this, into this one platform and do it that yeah. way. So, yeah, um, right. you know, that's, that's the other piece is really, yeah. Once we understand what that is, then, we can sort of put that roadmap together. Yeah, yeah, and that was interesting for me as well because I do use Kijabi as a platform mm. and, and I've got all my other kind of stuff on there as well. So it would make more sense for me to keep all of that on there and mm. keep it under the one platform because I can manage it all under the bonnet. And I love the way that you're very accommodating about that. So we don't really care what platform you want to use. We'll figure it out, but we'll offer advice as well around, mm. you know, making sure it's the right platform for you, you know, with, with that because I think... Um, you know, particularly with online resources, whether it be courses or whatever, um, they're all different and they all tell you they're awesome, but they're all lacking in something and they've got strengths in other things. Yes, and, uh, and, and I think to be able to offer advice for people around that, I actually kind of use three different platforms, you know, for mm -hmm. different things. One is just a follow up course for programs, which is a really good YZ. It's a really good platform, but it's got no e commerce, mm -hmm. no front end, no, you know, but it's, it's a really easy learning platform and it's easy to load info, easy to download, all that kind of jazz, but it just lacks any kind of stuff that you need from a commercial point of view um mm, yep. and so they're all like that thing i guess you know the more better than i do but um strengths and weaknesses right yeah definitely definitely yeah I, i've yet to find a platform that ticks all of my boxes yeah yeah um, i, I, I that, agree yeah and and it's a case of yeah this one can do it but it doesn't do it as well and and this one you know does this really well but but it falls down here yeah. so yeah, there, yeah. there's got to be some compromises along the way Okay, so we've had the strategy session. We've kind of worked strategy. out what we want. Yep. Number two, yeah, and then and then the next part is what we call our deconstruct reconstruct process, where we where we take the book and and go through the book and and really try and understand, you know, what are the what are the outcomes you're trying to get through the book and stuff. You pull that apart, um, not physically, you know, don't want to destroy your book in that way, but but pull it apart and 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 go, okay, well, what are those elements in that book that that can easily transfer and go across and we can reconstruct that as a, as a, a blueprint for an online program. Uh, you know, taking your book, for example, you know, great, great book. Um, and there was certainly some, a lot of stuff in there that was very much around the why uh, and some, some great stories in there, which we, we included at the start. But then there was also, there was a piece in that, you know, right in the middle of that book, which was very much around the process. Mm -hmm. And that, and then we went, okay, well, that's the key thing we want to take out. We want to take out the process. Because when you're looking at a book, a book is very much about the giving the information. 
the course or the program is more about the transformation. We actually want to get people doing stuff and doing things. And so it's really a matter of looking at that when we reconstruct it and going, okay, well, how do we take people through that, through that process? How do we get them to, to go down that pathway? And what are those other things that we need to create, such as checklists, job aids, you yeah. know, templates and things like that? What are those activities that we're going to get them to do? reflection and activities, all those sorts of things as part of that. And so that's that deconstruct and reconstruct process. The, the blueprint that you created for me, I found very helpful as well, you know, because it, it defined and you also kind of had in there, like if that's what the modules might be, this is where we need some activity. We need them to do something there. You created canvases for my program, you know, like interactive scoring things on the way. And that's all stuff. Again, one thing I've learned, you know, through e-learning, through working with some neuroscientists, working with, um, you know, professional program developers or e-learning developers like yourself, uh, again, is, is you can't just chuck anything on there and, and think that people are going to buy this product now. It's going to be awesome. You've really got to think about the interact, the user experience, of course, mm -hmm. um, yep. but, but also there's got to be video, audio, you know, visual as in, you know, materials to read or whatever it is, you've got to be multi, uh, you know, multi-sensory in that. And I found that very easy with you as well, because I've obviously had the audio book elements. So I've mm -hmm. got audio files, I've got video, I had, um, you know, some some other recordings that I've done, like a, a keynote on the topic mm -hmm. of charging what you're worth. You know, we can, there's a whole range of stuff there. And I, I really like the way that you're very accommodating to say, great, we could use that this way, this way. Um, uh, you know, even when we finish the first draft, you know, you're going, okay, I think we could add a bit more audio in here. And you didn't just chuck it in, you know, like here's 120 audio files <laughs> in a folder. Mm -hmm. You said, I think yep. we'll just use that little bit of that there. To, to make that experience. And it, there was a lot of that attention to detail stuff, Matthew, that I thought, oh, that really showed, you know, your thinking about it. it, it and and I, I love that, right? Because it's, it was all about attention to detail and thinking and how do we make this better for the user in this module, um, mm. which I don't think a lot of people would do that. And I, and, I, and I think that it's the little things like that that make an online course better is my view. Yeah, look, it is. It is very. It's very much about that that user experience and making sure that the content is is uh, you know love love the term ruthlessly relevant. Making mm. sure that it's relevant to them, but also that it is going to work for them in in you know in in that way. You know, having that good good effective experience, and that's where yeah we look at those things and looking at well what can we do? How do we make this better? And 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 try and put ourselves into into the shoes of that user and go. Would I enjoy this? Would I find this of benefit? You know, how does that how does that work for me as mm -hmm. a, if I was going through that process and really, yeah, taking that opportunity to think about it. As you said, it's not just a case of grabbing a heap of content and and dumping stuff in, um, because then you end up with this this situation where you're potentially going to start to overwhelm people, um, and and people are going to become a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, a little bit too much information and 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 they're going they're going to sort of disengage them as part of that process yeah um so yeah, yeah very much having having that great experience for them okay so what's the next stage what comes next so, so once we've got that blueprint then we go through and we start to look at how we can actually start to build out some of those assets um mm -hmm. you know like we, we did some some scripting well it wasn't full-on scripting it's more dot points so i, I mm -hmm. certainly don't like I, I never have had any success with a full script. Mm, <laughs> Getting me either. Me script, either. You know, um, yeah, it, it, it just comes across as too too robotic, too... It, it actually can take longer. So mm. generally we go, okay, well, these are the videos we need. Going through and and, and pulling that apart and, and doing those dot points for, for, to create the videos. And then looking at well, what are those other assets we can create as part of that and creating those assets. And again, with those assets, it's also looking at well, how can we, how can they be repurposed? Mm -hmm. So, for example, we did that infographic on uh, in your book. You've got that great, great piece where you know you talk about the lessons from hipsters, um, and we and we created that 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 infographic of the ten lessons you can learn from hipsters, which sits in the course nicely and is a nice, cool visual to to really sort of enforce mm -hmm. those those ten lessons. But it also is something that you could easily drop onto LinkedIn or, or totally. Facebook as a social media post 
to engage with people. So yeah, yeah looking at those assets. And so that's that, that piece around that and going kind of through there. The, the, the thing that I found with the blueprint side of things was very helpful as well, because you had put in there infographic in here, you know, canvas here, a score app there, bullet points, Andrew to do the video here and there. And I'd like to add something in here as well. Um, I think if you're going to create materials, online programs, whatever it is, you've got to be actively involved in it. Not, 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 you know, not a casual observer. Matt, just go and, and make this. And can you record the videos for us, Matthew? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like I recorded all of the videos for this program, and I, I literally did them all in a day. And I, and I sent Matthew a test one first of all. Um, and it was like, you know, consistency and all that kind of stuff directed again by you, Matthew, to be able to kind of talk about how to do it and and to make it work and sound needs to go up a bit there or make sure you're centered. You know, that, that little bit of prep stuff was really helpful as well. But I really, I, I understood again that the blueprint was about me making sure that, is that how, pardon me, how it flows or does that work? Does that make sense, et cetera? So, so the next stage after the blueprint of starting to develop all of that stuff um, was a lot easier for me and 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 I think yeah so 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 I went off did the videos you went off and created the other stuff then I guess the last the, the next part becomes putting it together right yeah that's right yeah and and obviously you know in your case you already had Kajabi and you already had the platform so that would made things a lot easier yep. um in, in other in other instances we'll work with 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 our client if they don't have a platform we'll actually work with them to actually develop the platform and set up that so uh, you know we've we've um, you know we've done that with a number of clients where we've gone okay well we need to create a landing page we need to you know build the build the platform and and do all of those things and set up some of those integrations so that you can that you can take payment and and that 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 you know emails will go out and all of those things so really yeah. setting up the systems is probably that part of it um, and yeah, and then putting that into into the program as well, because there's a lot to do that actually as well, isn't there? You know, th there's a lot of that. You know, getting it loaded onto the site is one thing, but but again, making sure that the the the, the sales process is going to work, the right email is going to go, the client's going to be added to a sequence of other emails, or added to the right database, or you know, what whatever it might be. There's actually a lot more to that than than people kind of realise as well. I think. There is, yeah. There's a lot, and 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 it's a matter of yeah, getting those integrations right, and and I suppose I I come, I, I'm probably very lucky that I'm I suppose I'm a bit of a, a bit of a geek in some ways, and and I'm I've been very lucky that I can look at platforms and look at tools and technology and understand it quite easily, um, and I need to remember that sometimes because I know a lot of people aren't that way. That's quite. right. That's right. Um, yeah. And, and so and so that's one of the advantages where I can actually go right. Well, you know, yes, I can show you how to do it, but sometimes it probably be, might be easier for us to just do it for you, mm -hmm. and we can set that up and we can set up that platform and 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 yeah, craft that landing page and and all those other pieces that you want to have. So that because it, again, it's it's you know you can have a great course, but if the front end it's a bit like a, a bit like a restaurant. You know, um, there's two ways you can look at this. You know, you can have a you can have a wonderful front opening for a, for a restaurant that's really wonderful and you know looks great. And then if you go in there and the food's terrible, well, people aren't going to go back. So mm. we want to make sure that the front end looks really good, um, but also that the the content that people consume is also valuable as well. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, you know, we can have really valuable content inside, but if the outside of the restaurant looks like a dump. And it's not attractive and people aren't actually going to go in even to to actually look at consuming the content. So we look at the platform in that way as well, mm -hmm. making sure that, yeah, okay, it's attractive that people actually do want to go in there and, and go, yes, okay, this looks like, yes, it says it's going to solve my problems, but it looks good as well. Um, and then and then when they do go in there, then they're actually getting and consuming the content that they need and getting the, the outcomes that they desire. Mm, okay. All right. So what next? Launch so, it. Launch it. Launch it. Well, no, before we launch it, we probably want to do a bit of testing as well. Okay. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's where we sent out and you, you had a couple of people going through and testing it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and because now is what nowadays as well, when we're looking at things, you know, if you think about um, you know, 
how are people accessing it? They're accessing it on a, on a, on a phone or a laptop or are they accessing it on uh, a Windows computer or a, a, or a Mac? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there, there's a couple of different web browsers. And generally, most things should operate, should be pretty, you know, good and, and relatively interoperable. So they work well across all, all browsers and applications. But sometimes things don't work. Mm-hmm. And that's the other part as well. You know, you don't want to go out there and, and, and do this launch and then have things fall over. So we before, yeah, go and actually do that launch. But before we do that, just making sure that everything's working as we intend it, do some testing and making sure that that, so again, it comes back to having that positive user experience. Mm. Um, so people go in and they go, yep, cool, this is it. Um, and again, because some people are, I suppose, a little bit technically challenged. Um, and, and if you give them uh, any sort of roadblocks, then it only just heightens their their you know their ability to disengage. You mm-hmm. know, if you go, okay, right, oh hang on, I tried to do it, um, but it didn't happen, or or it didn't yeah. happen as I expected. So it's really a matter of making sure that those errors, if there are any errors, are not, you know, that we've resolved those through that through that testing. Mm-hmm. And then we go through and we can launch. Um, yeah. I found that very helpful, to be honest, as well, when I sent it out to to a few people. And I had an early bird kind of special where a few people bought it early, um, about a dozen, I think it was, maybe a few, maybe 15, something like that. Um, and it was really interesting for me because those early adopters of it were great for feedback, you know, about the flow, about what worked. It, it also... You know, one of the big things that I find with tech, you know, is again, those that are a bit more tech challenged seem to struggle to access, you know, like mm-hmm. no matter how easy it might seem, you know, and you can get frustrated with that or you can say, well, okay, we just got to make sure we make it easy for them, you know, so we've got a good, you know, customer support kind of option in yeah. there as well. Um, yeah. But but it was, for me, the feedback was really good in terms of the course flow um, a few people made things like, oh, would we might work better if that was before that, you know, those mm-hmm. kind of yep. conversations. You go, okay, that's good. That that That's great. And I gave you that feedback um, and you were, you know, again, you took that feedback on board and kind of, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That works. We'll, 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 we'll change that so it flows a little bit better and put that at the end of every module and, and mm-hmm. that kind of thing there. And I thought, oh, that was really um, that was an in, a very, very important part of the process, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I got. But also a conversation again that we had that I found really very important for me. I, I had a bit of an idea again, the course is launched. Okay, see you later. Uh, yep. and, and we were tossing this around the other day and it was like my aha was like, what I get now is I'll be constantly adding to it. I'll be constantly adapting. I'll be constantly evolving it. I'll be adding things that I've worked out on you or make it more value without yeah. making it overwhelming. Um, launching it is just really the first part of, of that. And, or even the, the, you know, the getting the, the initial feedback is the first part, but then yeah. launching it from there, does, it's not a set and forget if you want to have a quality product that, that stays ridiculously relevant you know, to people as well, right? No, no, definitely, definitely. And and when I when I talk to people about this, I, I use the Simpson cartoon as an example. You know, and there's a great you can you can Google this and there's some great images. If you have a look at the, the Simpsons when they were first drawn in the in season one compared to to what they are now mm. or, or what they were, I think in about you know season 20 or whatever, completely different look and feel. Mm-hmm. And I see that as for, for people's courses as well. You know, this is the first course and you put it out there and you build it. But there's going to be things that you're going to look at and go, oh, okay, that just didn't quite hit. It didn't work properly. It didn't get the outcomes that we thought we were going to get. We need to change it out. Or, or as you said, someone might go, oh, I didn't think that, that sort of didn't flow quite well. Mm-hmm. Or, I, or I had this activity, but then that activity didn't land and didn't get the outcomes that I wanted. And keep refining it and keep, and keep you know, doing work on it. And, and yeah, it's, it's that constant, constant sort of evolution. Um, and again, looking at the, the content, I mean, if you look at, you know, talk about leadership programs, for example, if you think about a leadership program that would have been developed three, four years ago, compared to a leadership program today, Completely wouldn't different. have had anything in that. Yeah, nothing about nothing about how to deal with remote teams or hybrid working environment, you know, but obviously, we've, we've had, a, had a huge impact and a huge change in, in, in how that works over the past couple of years. So, 
It is a matter of going back and having a look at those things. I mean, even in our own programs that we do where we're teaching people around how to create courses, we're starting to bring in things around AI as well because that is another piece that's starting to move into, mm-hmm. into this space. So it is, it's a matter of really being constantly evolving um, to, to look at, okay, how can I change it? How can I improve it? Um, it's never going to be perfect. You know, it's, it mm. needs to be out there. It needs to be as good as you can be. Never going to be perfect because you're always going to be tweaking it. That's yeah, going to yeah. happen. I, I love it. Okay. So so we've got a great process. There's a lot of learnings along the way. We end up with a better product. I, I guess, you know, it, to, to lay it on the line for you, because again, I, I've done both techniques of building an online program myself. It's functional. It's okay. But what it lacked for me was the depth in the strategy and the 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 commercial commerciality of it you know i i mm-hmm. i made a very static kind of online program and i and i what i've realized through what you do mate is very much it's about it's it's a much higher level but it's also quite a lot of training um around training the the in me the entrepreneur the the, mm-hmm. the writer the creator or whatever it is um about what works and what doesn't so I guess the, 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 what comes out of that, though, people have two options. You either go off and do the stuff yourself or you work with someone like you. Now, obviously, you go and do it yourself. It's cheaper. That's a cheaper option. You pick a platform. You can go and do all of that kind of stuff. Work with you. There's a cost involved. Um, and, you know, it, it's you know it, it's not a cheap process, nor should it be a cheap process, right, because it, it is higher level. But if you were going to kind of sum it up, I know I'm putting you on the spot here a bit, but, but like <laughs> what is... Like, how would you define the value that you offer? And I know we've just spent half an hour talking about it, but but what's yeah. the value to someone to to utilize you as a you know as a program developer, a digital asset developer, whatever language we want to use? Yeah, look, I think the I think the big value really is comes back to a time factor. Mm. Uh, you know, there's, there's there's a lot of people that I know that have gone, yeah, I want to build, I've started to build my course, and then I'll see them six or twelve months later. And they're still building their course mm-hmm. because quite often, yes, you can do it yourself. You know, um, it's a bit like, you know, you want to go and do an oil change or service on your car. You can do that yourself. Mm. But do you do it as well as as a mechanic? Possibly not. If something happens, if there is if there's a if there's an error along the way, mm. how do you deal with that? Um, and, and that's the challenge. And, you know, and we've got people. Again, you know, you get stuck in this analysis paralysis. What platform do I use? There's so many platforms out there. I don't know how many platforms I've worked mm. with, you know, in, in my 20 plus years of, of working. There's so many. And I've looked at I've looked at just as many as well. Mm-hmm. So then that's just just that alone. What platform do I pick? How do I go with that? You know, what one do I do I work with? But then that analysis paralysis, like how much content do I put in? Um, you know. We, we see that that kitchen sink syndrome quite often happening with with experts where they go, mm. well, I want to give, and, and it comes from this position of, of, of love and, and going, I want to give people as much information as I can. But often that becomes a, a challenge because they're giving them too much information. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then, yeah, that, that analysis paralysis of how do I start? Where do I go? What do I put in there? Um, and so, yes, getting someone like ourselves to, to work with you is going to be a, a higher cost than than if you do it yourself um, on, on a monetary basis. But if you then take into account the time factor, um, you know, mm. where we can actually work with you and actually, you know, cut through some of that and help you with, avoid some of those, the mistakes that, that often are made and, 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 and give some, I suppose, some confidence and clarity around the, the direction that you need to take. Yeah, I, I agree. The time is a big consideration, and I, I think you're right there. I think again, though, I think you're underselling yourself a little bit, though. I, I think the other element that you you bring is that strategy that we were talking about before. Mm-hmm. Like, I think yep. as an author, it's very easy to say, "I'm just going to turn that book into an online program." So there's 25 mm-hmm. chapters, 25 modules. I'll go through it. I'll do that. And the online program that you developed for me is very different to the book in many respects. It's still, of course, it's about charging what you're worth. It's a concept, um, but but I would have done it very differently. And I think I would still be working on it for the next 10 years and it wouldn't yep. have been a better product. I think that the way that you, with fresh eyes, interpret the data, pull the book apart, 
pull any kind of, you know, you're working with a couple of my clients as well that mm. are to develop programs, um, you know, that, that are off the back of what they're doing. You know, again, it, it's that whole, the whole process is hugely valuable. But what it's also made me realize is the online course is the start. I've got all these other things that I can do as a result of this. I've got all these other assets. I've got all these <laughs> other, you know, kind of things. So many, you know, then I go back to my last 13 books and go, well, hang on, I've got all of this for all of those books. I've got hundreds yep. and hundreds of, you know, great potential assets um, that I <laughs> that I now look differently at, you know, when I'm yes. kind of doing that. And I think there's value mm. in that. And the third part about it for me is, I think that you need to have external eyes looking at your stuff to determine and advise you on how best it's going to be absorbed in an e-learning kind of environment. You know, that that whole thing. And there is also someone who's smart enough to be able to say, well, you're good at video or you're good at audio or you're good at this. Mm -hmm. We've got to work to your strengths, um, you know, to, to really customize it for you. I think that's another real mm -hmm. key. Yeah, yeah, look, I, yeah, definitely is that. I, I agree. Yeah, strategy is a, is a big thing there, and, and really understanding what that is. And I think, yeah, that that external lies piece is is also a big one. So often, you know, um, you know, even even myself, you know, I've, I've got people helping me, coaching me in 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 different areas. Of course. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because because you need that, you need to have those external lies because you you look at something and you go, okay, well, this is how I see it, but but is that necessarily the right way? Possibly it is, but yeah. in some kinds it's not, or or it do, you don't get that opportunity for for someone to go, okay, have you thought about this, you know, or this as right. an option, and, and and that I think is the other big piece here. So hugely that, valuable yeah. that that other part though, again saving yeah. time, but maximizing resources. If I can turn yeah. one thing that I've spent a lot of time and money creating into twenty different you know, tools that have mm. some to generate money, some to generate leads, some to build community, some to do, like, I, I look at all of that and go, that's, to me, busy guy doing what I'm trying to do with a lot of different things, a lot of irons in the, mm. in the fire. That's, mm. that is enormously valuable. You know, yeah, and yeah. Not, not, it's not like going someone on Fiverr <laughs> to build out your Thinkorific site. You know no. what I mean? It's a very different kind of service offering that you have, Matt. And, and I think that, that that that's the key understanding here you know is what you do is unique i don't really think i've come across anyone that does what you do um and and that's what makes it valuable to me as well so mm. yeah no that's it look it is it's and it's it's one of the things that we love doing and, and love getting into into these things and, and learning a little bit more about different stuff um but yeah but also it's this thing yeah just looking at it from that different perspective uh you know I had a conversation with a client yesterday and he's going, okay, we, we initially had the conversation about, you know, doing, taking his book that he's writing and turn that into, an, into a series of online programs. And he's gone, oh, I just had a thought. Could I actually do this as a face-to-face, -face, like a, a one day or a two day, you know, um, workshop or, or, or retreat? And I went, yeah, definitely. Right. The, the, the framework is still there. You know, we'd tweak certain things, you know, that's there. But I, but the other thing I said to him, I said, well, is that the, the other thing he needs to remember is that, okay, you've got your, you've got your two-day retreat. But one of the challenges with that is that it's not recorded unless you mm -hmm. are physically recording it. You know, you're not going to be able to go, oh, hang on, sorry, stop. I need to rewind what you just said. But I said to him, but if you're going to do that, what you then do is, and a bonus is say, yes, come along to my two-day retreat. I'm going to teach you all of this stuff. But I'm also going to give you access to my online program as well mm -hmm. for you to revise and, and review. And, and so you've got a, a, a resource afterwards that will help you remember. And if there was something that you didn't quite get in that two-day retreat, then mm -hmm. you can dive into that. So again, we've gone into this this ecosystem we've actually got one program and and then the other programs coming in to support it mm. um, and, and great and, value uh, add great value yeah. add you know you're going to do my four-day yeah. retreat and you're going to get this great online program i mean i did one yeah. years ago I, did, I i i made an online program out of a um, becoming a paid speaker which was really yeah. a, a recording of a one-day yeah. event that i did broken down into chunks and um transcribed and all that stuff very functional um, you know, audio files, video files, transcribe files for the, I don't know, however many modules it was. And I've used that as a value add. I, I've never sold that. I've always been a value add, but all of my speaker training, it's been the value add and it's been invaluable. 
to be brutally honest. You know, like people mm. people love it and go, this is amazing as a value add. And you kind yep. of go, great. You know, like again, th thinking a bit more laterally about, you know, what it is that we're doing here as opposed to I'm just making an online course. I'm going to sell a million of them and retire and live in the Bahamas. It probably yes. won't happen, you know, so you, probably not. your chances are dramatically increased if you work with someone to do it strategically. But think about the bigger picture. Think about, you know, what could you use? For me, even developing, you know, small, shorter online programs that are just, that, oh, give away for free, you know, mm. but they're good thinking. They're good stuff to to build community, to build my list, to do whatever it might be, you know, that kind of stuff. So rather than doing the five, you know, the definitive online program, maybe you need five smaller programs, you know, yep. like as you rightly brought out before. And yep. you need to have someone to talk that through with. I, I, I think, you know, that's one of our problems as entrepreneurs. It's always just us. I think therefore it yes. is, you yep. know. Yeah, awesome. Yes, definitely, definitely. Okay. All right, mate. Well, look, um, thank you for your time. I think we, we wrap it up here. Um, what I'm going to say, the best plan of attack for people, if you've watched this, listened to it, you're thinking a bit about it, um, I'm going to put the details here somewhere, um, which will be about just reach out and do a, have a have a call. Uh, talk to Matthew um, about where you're at, what you need, what it is. And, and just, you know, again, I, I think I even found our first conversation around this very helpful, mate. You know, just to get that understanding again about what it is you do, how you do it, et cetera, your process and all the rest of it. And I think that's that's the best bit of advice that I would offer um, because I know that you're going to get great value out of just simply having a conversation, but you'll quickly realize that this is a, this is a more, much more um, in every way kind of process. Yeah. No, look, it's a, it, thanks. It's been great, great having a chat. And, and look, yeah. Please reach out, you know, if you are watching this, because I love having a chat with people around this and just just throwing out those ideas. And that's the first piece is really mm. getting clear on what you want to go, what you want to do, what you want to achieve. And 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 yeah, we can have an opportunity to sort of go, okay, this is what what we can be done. And potentially then how we might be able to work with you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, mate. Um, folks, that's uh Matthew Mason, founder of Maven Zeal, author of Leverage Your Experience. Um, a very, very nice guy. As I say, I, I, my experience of working um, with Matt and his team was excellent um, in every way. Very, you know, I, I, I really do recommend him and, and, uh, and the team. And, you know, reach out, have a chat and, uh, and, and get that process started. So you're not just one of these people that either never finishes a product or never finishes a program or you create something that people don't like don't use you know don't don't waste your time your time is too valuable you know money we can keep making money you know but time is the hardest asset that we we've, we've got to take care of so i know we know that but i still see so many people that waste so much of their time simply you know because they're doing it themselves i've fallen down that trap many a time as well and i tell you it never pays off so um yeah awesome all right mate thank you very much matt no thanks for your chat it's been great Pleasure, mate. Bye-bye.